Hey there guys, welcome to another battle report. We are doing 40k this time and with me I have Michael Hello. from Team Clueless. You might have seen they specialize in 40k battle reports and a little bit of drop zone. A very little bit of drop zone. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're doing a sort of a city fight 40k game and we're going to do a little bit of jibber jabber in the beginning here now and which I might put a link in so you can skip it if you don't want to hear us ramble on about stuff. Let's give you a look at the board. We're obviously in a very dense city environment. Lots of buildings. What's the mission we're playing, Mike? We are playing oh, excellent thing. We're playing the first of the Maelstrom missions. Which I can't remember what it's called. It's something like cleansing control. I think it might even be cleansing control. Well there you go. So we've got the six objectives. There's one there. Just in front of this barricades in the open courtyard area. We've got one inside this building. Got one just in front of that bunker there that the orcs there's actually an orc unit inside that bunker as well. We'll there come is, back look, to that. Should, should we do the bunker? Look at these cunning bunkers Jason's got. If I can get the lid off. There you go. The lid comes off. What I, an excellent design. I've got one in my side as well, but there's nothing important in there than, other than a guard squad. Plenty of those around. There's another one on top of this building here, another one behind this barricade, and then one over there. So six objectives all together. We're obviously using the um, new Decks of cards. This will be my first time to use this sort of thing. Michael's a veteran. I and have the orky one. There you go. So those are the mission objectives. We're using the house rules that a lot of players are using, whereas if we draw a card that was impossible at the start of the game, we discard it. So I don't have a psyker, for instance. If Jason draws the card that says you must kill a psyker, he just discards it, draws another one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think most people are using those as their That's a good rules. rule. All right. I'll give a quick overview of my army, just going down the side here. I've got a hellhound. A Lehman Russ inside that bunker is a 10 man guard squad with a missile launcher and crack grenade thing. Um, platoon command there with three plasma guns. Um, this is a Chimera with a veteran squad, a Chimera with a stormtrooper squad. Another 10 guardsmen over there, same setup as the first one. Three scout sentinels um, with heavy flamers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a Demolisher, I believe it is. That it is. Uh, command squad at the back here with the Psyker, and that guy over there is the Master of Ordnance. Uh, and then we've got 10 Guardsmen again, same outfit with a Commissar, and then that's a Eradicator. And that is my Ogren squad. They are not Ogres, they are Guardsmen in Mexis. Um, and they are called the Ogren squad. Using them as ogres. I like them better than Ogres. Uh, so that's my army, and uh, we'll go through. That's Mike's army, go for it Mike. we are facing, so we've got our levitating truck who's actually under there but the fiddly bits can't fit on it. Uh, this one has three mega knobs inside with a boss pole and a combi scorcher. Hate mega knobs. Good, good. <laughs> uh, this one is a truck with 12 boys. Assume all my boys squads have knob with power claw and boss pole in them. Hate power claws. So there's 12 <laughs> boys in there. Then there's a unit of 30 boys there. And inside we have our war boss. We are using the rules for Gruck Face Ripper from the Stormclaw box, basically because his warlord trait gives him re-rolls on various checks for your orcs. It really helps keep your orc army together. And also inside there, there is a pain boy to give them all feel no pain, which is pretty handy. So we've got five looters inside the vehicle, inside the um, bunker. Then we've got a unit of six war bikers, again with the knob. And inside there, there is the big mech with a custom force field and a big chopper. And I think he's also got the thing using Feel No Pain on a 6 plus, possibly. Then we have a battle wagon. The death roller has been locked in place, so it just activates as a ram now, because they're very similar. And it has a single big shooter on the top. And inside of it, it has 20 boys armed with shooters and two big shooters in there as well. Then we have a big meg dread. Um, big dread. What are they called? I can't remember their exact name. Death, death dread. dreads, that's it. And it's got two custom mega blasters on the front. Then we have up here a single mech gun, which has the uh, tractor cannon, which is good for shooting down flyers. Then we have another battle wagon. This one has a kill cannon and a big shooter on it. And inside there are ten tank busters and a mech with a rocket launcher. And lastly there is another um, truck with three mega knobs, same setup as the first ones. Look at Jason, Jason he's killed an <laughs> boy already. That's right man, get them in while they can. Uh, oh, I forgot, I've got a Vendetta in reserve and you've got a Gretchen squad in Oh reserve. yeah. Yeah, the Gretchen. Right, uh, I just want to do one last thing before we start. This is a little bit of a product placement. I don't know if you can see the board that so we're playing on. Dolly Dealer. Yeah, go for it. 
This is a, a Kickstarter I did a while back called From Warsmith, which do uh, basically like play mats, although they're not mats, they're actual boards. Um, this is the City Fight one, and I was going to show you that they come in this little I'm trying handy to little box. So yeah. they come in a nice little sleevey thing, which we'll put that down there. But each individual board comes in one of these little pockets, and then they fold out into this sort of shape, sort of like a 2x2 two two sport. They have things on the back as well. I've got the ones with, um, I've got four boards. Two have dungeons on the back, and all four of them have the city fight section on the back, on the other side. And then, which is pretty cool, it gives you like an optional road maps and things like that. So you've got th three on here, and then the one over there it makes an 8 by sort of four board. And then these two have sort of a city Hulk, space Hulk thing on the back. But I think they're actually pretty good. They're really good quality. Um, good card stock, nicely detailed on the mats. The only problem I have with them oh, is those ones are from yeah. The floor. I, only problem I have is the one where my friend friends throw them on the floor. Yeah, uh, but when I fold them up, I always feel like you know, with any board game and stuff, when you're folding up boards, you're always worried that you might tear them off. Because if they tear in these little grooves, I'm not sure how easily that is going to be fixable. Mm. But so far, I mean, I, I think they're pretty good. They re really add some atmosphere they to really the game. Make, I think a board makes the game the table look so much better. I mean, when I play on the City Fight at home, if people watch our videos, you see I've generally got a black mat down, and seeing how this looks, looks so much nicer. Real improvement. What do you think of the quality of the board so far? I mean, the board's absolutely no, no idea. I'd be concerned, but as you say, I've always been concerned about board games ripping me doing, but I've never had one ripped, so I think it's just probably a psychological thing. You look at it and think, well, that'd be easy to break. Yeah. But I've never broken one, so and I play a lot of board games. Yeah, so do I. So I, I don't think it'll be an issue. I mean, I, I'm, I kind of feel like this is what I'm scared will happen to yeah. this year. That's what I'm scared might happen, but I don't know if it will. I mean, if the only time they're ever out is they're flat on the table, they're fine, or they're folded up in their nice protecting thing, they'll be fine. As long as you are careful when you fold them and unfold them, I don't think it'll be an issue. Yeah, you see the little details like there's a newspaper over there with some grates and things yeah, like that. Yeah, really nicely detailed. And I do some other stuff as well. I do like a sort of a fantasy battlefield one. Some uh, cigarette packets. <laughs> <laughs> is that a Coke tin or something? Yeah, they do uh, Star Realms, um, and I think one other one, they do like a 15 mil version of the City Fight one. Mm. So it's it's really good. I think you should go check them out. Yeah, it's there's, Warsmith. There's lots of maps out there. I've looked at one from Frontline Gaming, which is really nice. It's one of the mouse map ones. Mm. But it, you have to roll it up, and it takes up kind of like a space like that. Yeah. You've only got one type, whereas here you've got four different types of board, and they pack up into a really Handy. easy to kind of like store thing. Okay, so there's our little bit of product placement for Warsmith. I don't work for them, by the way. <laughs> Neither does my... But if they want to pay us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so now we should get started with our game. Uh, Mike's get first turn, because he deployed first. Wah! I failed to roll for the Seize Initiative, as I rolled a 1, plus 1 for deployment, plus 2 ones for my um, spells. Oh yeah, I've got spells. He's got spells and all kinds of stuff. Jason's never played 7th edition before, so it's a bit of a learning game. Yeah. Go. The last 40k game I played was with Mike and the City Fight game, which you can see the link if you uh, on one of our videos. And uh, that game didn't last very long, as me and John got <laughs> absolutely thrashed. Yeah, you did. <laughs> right, so what about what have I got? I got uh, four spells. Uh, I got prescience, misfortune, force, and foreboding. And as we go through the game. Well, I'll probably cast a few of them and then explain what they do if you don't know what they do. And we'll tell you what our objectives are as we go through the turns. So there you go. That's all our pre-ramble nonsense. And you've seen our armies, you've seen the board. Let's get this cracking. We'll probably be over in a couple of minutes. Good luck, Mike. I've got Ashton to do this and he did it upside down. I don't even know how you Can do that. Jason's talking over the start of the video. He's gonna have to, <laughs> you're going to have to edit that now. Oh, my. Okay, so. Work for me. Orky turn one has been completed. So, hopefully, if Jason has done the video right, you'll have seen a nice little picture flash up of which objectives I'm going for, so I don't even need to go through them. Don't say that, I might, might mess it up. Well, that's why I said it. <laughs> so, I basically moved forward. I got a really good run and um, move through cover all on my giant squad of 30 orc boys who are deployed over here. They're all moved up to the halfway point of the table. Both the trucks over here that started in this ruin managed to get out of the ruin without ruining themselves. Too many ruins in that sentence. Uh, the one with the boys has stopped here, smack bang on top of an objective to score it this turn. And the mega knobs have turbo boosted into position over there. 
In the centre of the table, I moved up both my battle wagons and my death thread, and my big mech with custom force field has moved into position, so he's more or less exactly six inches away from each of them, granting them all invulnerable saves for the turn, which is his job. Uh, over on this side, this other um, truck with the mega knobs in was forced to only move slightly far forward because I wanted to score the number one objective this turn, so I'm three inches away, so their assault has been a little bit stymied. Uh, shooting phase wasn't as good as it could have been, but it wasn't awful. I unloaded and managed to kill one of the sentinels, who I put quite a lot of fire into. Obviously, because this is a bit of a city fight game, there's a lot of uh, line of sight blocking trains, so you can't always bring your firepower to bear where you'd like it. Um, and I killed a few various and sundry guardsmen, but didn't really do anything. Um, but the main thing I did, I fired my looters over at the Hellhound, and oh, what can it do, Jason? It can't fire during your turn, what a pity. So annoying. And obviously, it's there. taken a whole point as well. I rolled a one on the damage there, and Jason's his face was a bit smug, thinking, yeah, I'm alright, but no, can't fire. <laughs> so that's quite nice. And victory point wise, I have discarded the card that um, means I had to score objective two, which is over there. I've kept the card in my hand, which is the one where I have to kill one of his characters. I was really hoping to do it this turn by unloading 40-odd shots onto that squad, but all people are still came to Jason's rescue. <laughs> but I did score D3 victory points for controlling three objectives this turn. I control that one, that one, and the one hiding under Jason's finger. But unfortunately, I only rolled a one on my D3, so I have got one victory point. This is where we'll be tracking our scores for the game. So I have one victory point, and Jason's on zero because he's not doing very well. <laughs> well, yeah, still, not doing, still losing. Oh, fair enough. Let's see how he goes on his turn. Right, so this is the end of God, Imperial God, Ten Don't you White. mean Astra Militarum, Jason? Who the hell are they? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, interesting, my objectives, as hopefully you might have seen, were score twice... Maybe I'll share if you forget to do that. Yeah, or calm to forget that. <laughs> Look, shit, maybe. Uh, I got two of those to score, two of those, like, two cards to score there, and one which was down there in the corner. Not so, the best of cards. No, so, ah, uh, that was really tough. But... I tried to do the best with what I could on my turn. What I did was I fired a bit on this orc unit, big fat orc unit here, and killed about eight of them. So they took a couple of pinning tests and stuff, whatnot. Well, actually, let's go through turn one. In my psycho phase, I cast prescience on the demolisher, which came in very handy. Yep. And I ca tried to cast um, the rending one on them, which I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, misfortune. Misfortune on the truck, so that they could try and rend it with their las guns. Unfortunately, I miss failed to cast it on five dice. Can you believe it? Yeah. So that was my psycho phase. Not bad. I thought it was all right. Uh, in the order phase, I put an order on them to pin the the big unit of orcs over there, which was successful. And the order was successful. We didn't successfully pin me. No. Um, the or this guy did the order uh, on this tank. Was it the tank? No, he did it on did tank hunters on those. That's right. Yeah, which helped take out that truck over there. And I did another order somewhere else, which I can't think you of what it was. Norse cover on the command squad. That's right, yeah, yeah. Which took out those guys over there with the mortar and stuff. So yeah, no, not bad with my command phase. Yeah, good. Shooting phase, a little less. Obviously, the ogres just ran up because there was nothing else to do. Uh, I took out that truck and then two of the knobs that were in there. Yeah, that prescient demolisher ate me for breakfast. That was really important because if those guys got through this road here and into my lines here... Yeah, it pretty much that flank is gone. Yeah. Well, what happened? What's happened now is he's obviously just left with that one knob. Hopefully, I can deal with that. Obviously, he's got the truck with what it, tank busters in there, mm. so that's still a problem. Um, I sent my sentinels just to block off this area. Yeah. They ran forward to slow down that dreadnought. Think they're going to get chopped by a dreadnought next turn. Yep, yeah, but that's what you get for roadblocks. <laughs> and I moved up my chimeras with my veterans and and um, stormtroopers as well. Also, kind of to block the way and kind of to try and pick on that big squad to thin them down. I also killed a biker over there. So it's not bad. Uh, great. And then obviously my freaking hellhound, which is a massive loss to me. Couldn't fire, so I've just moved it up to block that uh, truck over there. Slow down as well. And I fired the demolisher into the, not demolisher, uh, the battle cannon from this. And also these guys in the third big squad there. So a little bit of bits and bobs, you know, I think I killed like eight or nine orcs, a biker, and two knobs, and a truck. But, the truck, I believe, gets me a victory point. Certainly first does. Blood. So I'm level on points. Naturally, I didn't score any of my objectives, because they were rubbish. But hopefully, Mike's going to get rubbish objectives on his we turn, too. We shall see. 
Right, so I'm going to go make tea, and he's going to draw his objective. And he's, and he's talking at the start of the video again. <laughs> More editing needed, dear me. So, Orc Turn 2 has taken place, and a bloody one it was too. Uh, so, shockingly, we decided to push forwards of all of our boys. You may have noticed we're playing on a slightly truncated table. It's only a three foot wide as opposed to a four foot wide. So we each only had six inch deployment zones, but I feel that is a slight detriment to Jason because he can't retreat back as far from my Orcs as he would normally want to. But he set the table up, so it's himself to blame. Yeah. Isn't that right? That's the way it is, man. <laughs> uh, so over here, my single Meganob decided to bravely assault the unit of six Ogrins. I heavy flamed them first with my combi scorcher, and then made to get into combat. I rolled a double one, unfortunately, and Wait, using the orc reroll. It did cause two wounds. With I the did flamer. cause two wounds in my flamer, but even with a reroll of one of my dice, I didn't make it into combat. So I'm sitting there looking like a lemon about to get killed by a load of Ogrins. <laughs> Uh, this tank, with the tank buster's in, moved 12 inches round to the side so it could score objective number 3 and get into the side armour of that Lemon Rust Demolisher there, uh, because that's the most dangerous thing this side of the board, I feel. Um, unfortunately, I had to snap fire on my rockets, only got one through and didn't do any damage to the tank. Um, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, I've got, I can't remember, Death Dread. Death Dread. He moved forward into the two puny sentinels and sawed them both in half with his big power claw arms, which was quite nice. And unfortunately, so well. yeah. Unfortunately, one of them exploded and took out one of the bikes who had moved forward to assault Jason's unit, who was in this building. Also, one of my bikes died as he valiantly rode across this really rubble-strewn terrain. You can see how a bike would have trouble with those stairs. Um, as he moved through there, he died. So I killed two of my own bikes this turn. But in combat, they managed to make a short job of Imperial Guard. Uh, wiping out all of the squad but the two members of the heavy weapons team who have retreated down the stairs and are running off the board. Uh, in the middle here, I moved forward and rammed the centre Chimera, dealing one whole point to it, and the guys inside managed to snap fire and kill two of the squad at the back. So it's immobilised. Oh, it's immobilised. and But I couldn't see this guy because he was hiding right behind me, so he didn't die. Uh, this other Chimera here has suffered a whole point loss due to firing from my two truck big shooters over here because they couldn't do much else. Uh, this truck had the Mega Knobs in. They got out and ran around the side and have beaten up that Lemon Rust in close combat. Not a shock with my free power claws. And the big squad of 30, although closer to 20 now, boys, surrounded the um, uh, Hellhound that was unable to fire last turn and ripped it to pieces in close combat. This squad here are still inside their truck. This turn I have scored two victory points. I scored one for killing characters of Jason's, because I killed the sergeant there and the platoon commander there. And I scored one for controlling objective number three. So I am... 3-1 up on the end of my turn too. Let's see what Jason can do on here. Right, so this was the end of my turn two, was it? Yep. Jesus, only turn two. Astra Militarum turn two. You, you mean you'd be guard turn two. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what happened? Uh, my uh, vendetta came on. Um, uh, you might have seen that uh, my objectives this turn was to wipe out three units... Uh, it's going to be a real disappointment if you don't get those yeah, photos yeah. up. <laughs> and then capture that one down there and that one over there. So, I started off with uh, casting Misfortune on that knob over there. Um, just so I could try and rend his ass and make sure I get him. And then I was hoping to get the Dread, maybe. And something over there, like maybe the trucks or something like that. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't pan out. Order phase went much better, as just as well. They only had the one unit that could cast orders, so they did the rending on this unit here. Was it rending? They tried to fire the Dreadnought, didn't they? Ah, yes. No, it was Tank Hunter you Tank Hunter, that's it, yeah. Tank Hunters, but they didn't do anything. And then I did the um, fire on my targets on this unit again, and they flew all the way onto this big mob of orcs that were down here, and did about eight casualties. Yeah, even though you scattered it. Fair distance, she still blew the crap out of a load of walks and I was all bunched up after my attack last turn. Yeah, that unit has taken actually quite a beating this turn. I'm yeah, gonna... I think they're down to around 10 models now, so really less effective now. Well, we're 30 to begin with, but mm. the best result I think from this turn was well, nothing else really happened on this side of the flank. I mean, I put two hull points on that thing there, almost got the, big, the third unit there, and uh, caused about 20 kills on that thing. Yeah, you killed so many boys. Uh, my veteran squad in that tank over there tried to push through, because I was trying to push through to that five objective marker over there, 
and I got mobilized myself on the sandbags. <laughs> but the battle wagon is no more. It blew up, and those 20 shooter boys are running away for the hills with only the six or seven of them left. Yeah, it wasn't good. You blew up and killed a load of them, and then they took an extra casualty because they failed their pinning, so I had to use the... Um the mob rule table which killed another boy and then at the end of the turn because they'd taken a quarter casualties they had to roll another leadership check which they failed and then the mob rule table because there's not more than 10 of them caused them to run away this time so they're scampering with their tails between their legs unfortunately I think that was majorly for me there because I get rid of them out of the way yeah they were a big threat in the centre of the table they both gone my... after both of your chimeras yeah both my chimeras still have their troops inside them and I was reluctant to take them out just for the fact that they would just get mowed down yeah. by those boys at the start of your turn I considered you had this side of the table I had that side and you probably were slightly behind in the middle because that was such a powerful unit but now your vendetta's there and both your chimeras are still operable and I don't have anything so now you've got two sides of the table which is bad woohoo but this freaking dreadnought's still here. It's taken two whole points and it's lost a car, claw. Car. And he can't move. And he can't move, thing. yeah. My, uh, uh, this, this thing over here, Eradicator did nothing, just pinged off his armor. The demolisher put a wound on it and blew off its claw. And then, um. No, the Eradicator did do, um, he's the one that mobilized it. Um, oh, yes. It from moving. That's right, yeah, yeah. Luckily, my big mech's nearby, so I managed to make one of the saves after Jason would have blown it up this turn. Yeah, so. I think that's that's it. So I scored one extra victory point. So that puts me on two. Mike's on three, and he's going to have his turn three now. And uh, it's an interesting game so far. Hopefully, the, the tank busters in, the, in this tank over here. Yeah, I think they're, they're my only hope this side of the table. Yeah. And I've got the, they've moved the Gretchen in on over there. So I might be sending those Ogrens over there to beat their head in, or maybe fire a mortar over there. I don't know. But let's see what Mike does on his turn three. Oh, I've got to kill those. Okay, it is Orc turn three. Uh, good turn for me this turn. Uh, so, the turn, uh, turn the tide there. Yeah, that's it. Jason had a really good turn last time, but I think I had a good one this time. Uh, firstly, guys in the centre of the table managed to rally, which is always nice. Uh, my war boss called his war this turn because I wasn't sure, because you have to declare at the start of the turn, I was uncertain what I was going to do. Uh, so I moved my war boss through this bit of rubble, and with his run roll, they managed to get to that vehicle and rip it apart in close combat. Uh, Jason piled out the back afterwards, but he had failed his pinning check, so his unit of veterans, you can see down there somewhere, they are pinned for the turn, which is really nice. Which I'm is really annoying. Really it's... annoying, because he needed them. Yeah. Uh, this truck here, which is the really damaged one, has moved backwards. Um, it's got no weapon left, and it's got one hole point left, but it's sitting on that objective in case it comes up. This one still has 12 fresh boys ready for the fight inside. They have moved up around the side. Uh, my three mega knobs assaulted the building. I managed to knock two hole points off of it, and I have wounded a couple of guys inside, but they're still happily going on. I fired my tractor cannon, the anti-air weapon of doom, <laughs> up at the uh, vendetta and obviously did nothing. Um, down here, mm, not much happened there. My snap fires didn't do anything for my boys. My looters fired up at the vendetta as well, didn't do anything. My death dread stood there. Oh, I've got some it will not die rolls to make. Let's quickly do that on camera. So the death dread has Grot Riggers so on a five plus. He gets a whole point back. Oh yeah, whole point ah. back. Uh, my tank busters stayed in their tank this turn. They're really close to the Ogrins, so the Ogrins are probably going to assault my tank. But at least that means they're not assaulting the mighty mighty Gretchen over here. Uh, they fired their tank buster rocket launchers out the side and have wrecked the demolisher, which was a really good result. Really lucky on my end half getting enough hits to get the damage through. Uh, my bikers managed to brave the difficult terrain over there and assaulted and shot at Jason's command squad and have butchered through them in uh, a nice glorious uh, tor torrent of blood. I lost another orc boy um, on bike due to the combat result but I'm still doing okay. There are three bikers left but they're tearing through Jason's army. They've been really good. Importantly you killed the Psyker as well. Which and I killed point. the Psyker which was again we keep on saying that hopefully you've seen the cards but one of them was Killer Psycho, which I've got. So this turn I managed to garner one victory point for killing Jason's Warlord, who was the guy over there. I got one for killing a Psycho in the turn. I got one for controlling Objective 3 here. And one of the cheesiest draws was I drew, have three of my units in my table, in my deployment zone, and none of Jason's. I have the Gretchen, I have the Met Gun, 
and I have looters inside this building, so that was just a free victory point. <laughs> so that was pretty nice. So I have rocketed up 7-2 now, but I have had an extra turn. Jason, I think, was really crippled by drawing three of his opening cards were not particularly useful. I think possibly a house rule of getting a redraw at the start of the game or once per game getting a, yeah, an I extra discard or something. Just to, sort of thing yeah, just to get over that, but we'll have a discussion about that at the end. Alright, so this is the end of my turn three, and again, I mean, victory points wise, it might not be that close, but board, board wise, it's going really close. So now on this side, there's not really a lot going on. That, but the truck's still there, this truck's moving closer. But these guys took a wound on that one, and one of their mates got killed. Those guys didn't do much because they were snap firing, and I didn't really get them all the hits. But those guys there took more casualties, they're <laughs> down to two guys. And I'm really happy that the Death Dread is dead. They got blown up. Um, the bikes have basically been wiped out. You just got the custom force wheel guy left. And the truck has also been blown up. And these guys even passed their printing test, which is really annoying. Because now they're probably going to take out my Eradicator, which is my last bastion of hope in terms of... Big tank. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so on my turn, hopefully you saw the pictures. I can say that every turn. Uh, I got two victory points from holding objective three because I did yeah. the same card twice. That was good. Those Ogrins served yeah. really well this game. Because they're in there, basically underneath it. So uh, I got two victory points from that. And the board wise, I think I'm really in trouble down here. I mean, these guys are probably going to crop that. <laughs> Those guys are going to run around and smash oh, the them. boss is in the middle here. Yeah. So, there you go, that's my turn three. Orc turn four. So, what happened this turn? Well, I wanted to take out Jason's Eradicator over there because it's his biggest tank and biggest threat probably left on the board. And you had a victory point, had a victory point tied to it. Uh, so, my tank busters, I could have turned around and shot the Ogrins, but they're really bad versus Ogrins. Uh, so, we moved over there, shot it, knocked only two whole points off, which I was a bit annoyed about. So then I had to charge it, which meant I was melter bombing it, so then we blew it up and it killed five of my, six of my guys in return. I managed to kill three of Jason's in the explosion as well, so not everything was lost. Uh, the big mech stayed in cover and shot at the plasma gunner, who was on his own down there, killed him, which is quite nice. He's got a cupcake! Uh, this truck over here still has 12 boys inside, it's my secret hidden weapon, it has jetted across the board to get itself into a more advantageous position to assault the rest of Jason's stuff, which is now surrounding me. Uh, these two are hiding. <laughs> yeah. and Not by choice, shot though. the Ogrins, no. <laughs> Did nothing. Uh, the mech gun over here managed to hit the flyer. Jason chose not to jink. Um, and I managed to do a glancing hit, which put a whole point on. And then I have immobilised it using my tractor special rule, but failed to blow it up. Down here, my war bosses squad, which isn't really big anymore, it's about eight orcs and him and a pain boy, uh, we multi-assaulted. I slightly miscalculating, forgetting that multi-assaulting you lose your charge benefits. So my orcs over here, which I was intending to uh, kill the Chimera with, couldn't actually hurt it at all. So my war boss, who was also in base combat, um, had to kill it, um, which meant the guys got out the back, but they passed their pinning check. But I only got two wounds on the squad in front, but Jason still failed his leadership check, but didn't go off the board. So Jason is there, and hopefully he shall, well, hopefully the him will rally next turn. My Meganor's managed to glance the building to death, so these guys have piled out and have passed their leadership check as well. So there's a lot of Jason stuff on the board over there, um, and he's got he's still his unit up there, and his Ogrins are his main threat. I'm, my tank busters aren't looking particularly healthy, and I suspect his command squad, his um, infantry squad will be able to finish them off this turn. But my big mech is still there as well as a threat. Let's see what he can do. Right, so this is my turn four, and uh, interesting, still in the balance. It's uh, nine points to five, in case you're wondering. I've got another... You've given away how your turn went. <laughs> Well, it wasn't that great a turn. It could have been a lot better, though. <laughs> well, uh, the Ogrins did a run again. They uh, well, they killed some Gretchen. I mean, <laughs> and got a victory point. And they got you a victory point for being near my table. So they wiped out, as you can see, they wiped out the Gretchen and got that victory point off him and scored me the one for being within 12 inches. This was the disappointing part for me. Vendetta flied over, killed one of the tank busters, and my rapid firing 
Commissar squad killed another one. Even if it, and it was the champion as well. There's three blokes left, and they rolled three on the freaking leadership test. So they're sticking around, causing me more headaches. And obviously this guy's in my rear, so... Woo-wee, that's looking difficult. Over here, um... Because these guys rallied, and could only snap fire, I managed to take out these, um... Megalops. Megalops. But only because of the two melter guns from there. These guys caused no casualties on there, and obviously they caused no casualties. I have sacrificed my stormtroopers to take the brunt of the next charge. <laughs> Which I'm not really sure was that wise, but hey, I've got to try and stall this freaking orcs somehow. So, let's, that's really getting close. We're on to turn 5 with Mike next. Yep. Uh, so I think... And you, I think importantly, you kept two cards to give you D3 if you managed to do yeah, that. Yeah, Supremacy and Innocent. And they're both doable, so... If I can get both, oh my god, if you get both, jump. that's 2D3, you could easily catch up there. Really interested to see what I'm going to get this turn. If I can get enough ahead now to, to keep it in the bag. That's really interesting. Well, Mike's got basically a squad left in this um, tank over here. Yep. Yeah, I've only got... really got two squads left. Yeah, those two <laughs> right there. I've actually got looters left in here if I ever remember them oh, there. Yeah. But I keep on forgetting. This <laughs> is what these buildings do. I don't like them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They work to my benefit. Right, let's do his then. Uh... Okay, Orc turn 4. Possibly it was my last turn of the game, we'll be rolling soon. So this turn, hopefully you've seen my objective cards. Um, I decided to try and go for as many VPs as possible, as Jason's got two cards up his sleeve that can gain him D3 victory points, and it's quite possible he can score both of those. Uh, so I really need to get a nice healthy lead. Uh, so I attempted to go for the turbo boosting one, get three models um, turbo boosting. So I first of all turbo boosted my biker on his own, you can barely see him, I should really paint some bright colours on him so you can see him. Uh, he's down there. I then secondly went to turbo boost this truck over here, who promptly immobilised himself, so didn't get to turbo boost. So I then piled the boys out the front of it and started to alter plans. Uh, them and the tank busters that were hiding over there decided to do a combined charge on these. The tank busters charged in first to absorb the overwatch, and then these guys charged afterwards. They failed their charge, it wasn't 11, so it was unlikely. Uh, and then the tank busters were wiped out in combat by Jason's squad who were consolidated towards the centre of the table. So that was not a good move by me over there. I was grasping at straws after my um, uh, turbo boosting plans went awry. I'd moved these over here and I ran these first of my units to see if I could get a 6 on the run dice to try and I then would attempt with other units to get the run. But again I only got a 4. My looters, because I keep on forgetting them inside this cursed building down here, they piled out the front and they attempted to run. If they'd have rolled a 6, they would have got within 3 inches of the number 6 objective and scored me another victory point. Unfortunately, they only rolled a 5, so they're just half an inch short, which was annoying. The truck over here, which is kind of like a weapon destroyed on one hull point, can't really move very far because it's um, surrounded by difficult terrain. I don't want to immobilise it, but luckily this objective number 4 came up this turn, so... He stayed there and scored my only VP You're of the pretty turn. Pretty lucky with that, man. Yep. <laughs> uh, in the centre here, my uh, boys squad, led by my war boss, assaulted um, Jason's stormtroopers, wiped them out, and have consolidated backwards. Again, their consolidate was one inch short of getting to the number six objective, so I've got it surrounded, but I'm not scoring it. At the end of the turn, I have a healthy five point lead. I am ten VPs to five. But let's see what Jason gets on his turn. Alright, so this was my turn 5. <laughs> I went for a ballsy turn. And we'll tell you in a second if that paid off. First thing I did was did a bit of shenanigans here. I moved my ogrens up in this little conga line to fire on these guys here. Which helped. I killed one. They failed their leadership test. But they rolled three, so there's no one to club. So he's still standing there. And these guys moved off that objective to that objective. What I was trying to do is trying to get three objectives. But obviously I couldn't score two objectives with the same guy, with the same unit, and I, I kind of figured I wanted to move away from these guys, so I've controlled those two objectives there, the one that my, Mike's had for most of the game, yeah, my fault, Gretchen, <laughs> and I got line break obviously there as well, so that's interesting, um, down this way, um, I went for a sort of a risky move, there's an objective in there, if I could get that one, obviously I would get three victory points, uh, three objectives, which get me another D3 victory points, so I ran them, Move them forward and then try to run. I needed a 4 plus on the D6 and I rolled the one. Eh, eh, eh. So I didn't get it. These guys moved up and fired onto the war boss's unit, put a wound on the war boss, 
because he's the closest target that failed his lookout sir and killed one more orc. If I'd killed two more orcs, I could have made them take a leadership test. So You've been would... rolling really bad with your las guns. Your melter guns are killing orcs left and right, but your yeah. las guns, obviously, they're not very good at doing it, but you're not getting many wounds for I it. I needed to recharge the flashlight batteries. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so that's basically the end of my turn because there's not a lot of the, Valky uh, the Vendetta so flew off and the victory points. You got that turn, didn't you? So yeah. you're up to 8 because you rolled a 5. So it's 10 8, and now we're rolling to see if the game continues. The game will end on a 1 or a 2. I want it to end at this point. A 1! Oh. It ends! Well done, mate. Well done, man. <laughs> the Orcs win 10 to 8. That was a really good game, though. That was, yeah. I was ahead on victory points all the way through, but it was never out of reach, I don't think. It was always. There was always stuff going on on the table. It was always competitive. No, that's right. I mean, I had that one ascendancy card left, and if I'd got that the test turn, I would have scored. Well, I would have scored oh, you one. should have rolled that. <laughs> <laughs> but even still, that was pretty, pretty freaking tight. I mean, I, I think maybe if this game had gone another turn, you'd probably still would have won. Yeah, I had. I mean, what would your had... next objectives been? I still had the control objective marker six, which was the centre board. And I would have got uh, score one if oh that oh, we wouldn't have used that one. Uh, I need to completely destroy three to five enemy units during my turn, or one enemy unit for one victory point. So that would have been pretty easy. And score one victory point if one of my scoring units is in twelve of your table edge. So well, that wouldn't be quite as easy as it looks because I'd have had to move my orcs inland, as it were, to assault your unit. So, but I reckon I'd have got at least one there, probably two. Yeah. I think going forwards, I had, I only had the war bosses unit and the twelve boys over there who were actually useful, and you had your ogrins and you had two semi-useful spots. We I think we were still pretty even, and your vendetta. Uh, yeah, my vendetta come my back. Only scoring, uh, only model that's still scoring. That's very really annoying. I was debating on like turn three, yeah, maybe. Yeah, turn three. You're <laughs> like, should I kill that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, maybe I'll just fly over here and blow this up and get it out of the way. And then a turn came up where you had to score on turn four and the one that was yep. like, ah! Oh. But no, I thought that was really good. Really close. I mean, it, it felt a lot closer. Maybe it doesn't look that close. Ah, eight ten, I think it's pretty close. But it's actually 11-9 because we each score line breaker at the end of the game. Oh, that's true. So how did you feel the new Maelstrom objectives worked? Is it the cards? That's what the cards are, yeah. Uh, I think they're interesting. I think they add a lot more decision-making to the game. Yeah, me too. I, it's I, not just... I just kill you, and then at the end of the game, as long as I've killed more than you, I'm generally going to win. Obviously, there's movement to get two objectives near the end of the game, but yeah. I think it, it makes the game much more interesting as it goes along. I think so as well. I mean, uh, they say they're all the proverbial throw a spanner in the works. Yeah. When those cards come up, and you're like, oh man, how can I benefit the maximum from these cards to get the victory points? I think it works It works really well. I mean, That's yes. Because I, I was a little way up halfway through the game, but then you got both those cards that gave you D3, and yeah. you could get both of them. I mean, there was a possibility that I could leapfrog you on that last turn, yeah. which would have been really cinematic, just held out the last bit. But yeah, that's freaking all. Uh, I thought, I mean, uh, yes, they are lucky what you get. I mean, I thought you yeah, were quite lucky with some of the ones you got. Yeah, there was, you I had them before scored. the turn even scored, you know. I got the Gretchen one and I got the one over here. And I don't think you ever got the one in your setup zone. No. And, I mean, you got one that was three units sitting there as well. Yeah. It's just like, but I, I don't have a problem so much with that. I mean, it's just the... the ebb and flow of war isn't it yeah because we set up the objectives early on and i chose the side that had the two objectives that gave me an early lead i think yeah because my first turn i think i scored three from all the ones nearby they finally left their nest yeah they were <laughs> running forwards so what do you think of the changes from sixth edition there weren't many changes i think the no. main one is the ability for every unit to score yeah that, i think that also makes a difference because like you said it, it, it does mean that no longer you just aim for the units that can score and then yeah. denial everything Whereas now, everything is a scorer, so you're trying to kill everything as much as possible. That's it, and it means every unit can attempt to contribute in the various ways of the game. It's in the shadows. There's it's the old big mech, his force field was pretty handy this game. No, I, th I, th I thought they'd work well. I mean, I think, I actually think, I mean, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of 40k. I do like 40k, and I like the background, I like the fluff. But I prefer the more thematic games than the actual, you know, really tournament heavy games. Yeah, that's it. I most people generally agree that a tournament list, unless it's playing against another kind of like really focused tournament list, just doesn't make for particularly good games. But here we both had, neither of us had kind of like a really tight tailored list. Wow. We had lots of infantry, quite a few vehicles. It, both armies were just kind of like normal armies for both of their particular races. I like, uh, when I'm building lists, I like to have as many men on the ground as possible. Yeah, that's what I do with orcs. An orc boy is pretty sweet for six points. 
was quite funny. I, I said at the beginning of the before, I think before we came on camera, I said, uh, you know, I, I tried to choose as many troops as like soldiers as I could, yeah. and then you laid yours out, and I was like, holy <laughs> crap, man. <laughs> But, uh, no, I definitely thought that was good fun. I mean, uh, it was close. It was cinematic. Every turn, I felt we had choices to make. Mm. But whether or not to go, how I was going to benefit the minute maximum from my firepower. And, you know, it wasn't just one turn wiped me out. It was gradual yeah, attrition it. from our units. Who do you reckon your most valuable player was? Oh, definitely the Ogrens. Yeah, they were awesome. I mean, they took out this this unit, this tank thing here. They took out the Mega Knobs that were in there. They took out the Gretchen. I scored some victory points. Yep. Uh, other than that, I thought... And uh, also, they absorbed fire whenever I did anything to them. Like, you've got two models with wound spot on them. I really... I've been contemplating getting Ogrins and seeing them in action this game. I've, the fact they've got three wounds each and there's less strength 10 in the game now that monstrous creatures can't smash for lots of attacks. I think they're much more survivable. And those are just the basic Ogrins. Yeah, well. I think I'm going to get a set with the shields and... Have a go with them. I thought the psychic phase was interesting as well. Hmm. I mean, uh, it was the first time I used psychers, and it was interesting just to cast some spells and. That's and it. They've made it so you get a few more powers now. Like you always get your primaris if you take all from the same school, so you have a few more options in the psychic phase. So you were sitting there, do I need rending to hurt a vehicle? Do yeah. you have a twin link to make it more reliable? Obviously, with the guard army, you're also doing the orders as well. So it feels like there's a lot of mm. actual instruction yeah, and things orders. going on. I, th I felt the game turned in my favour when I killed your squad that had the Psyker and your commander in. Because yeah. you seemed to have a lot less options then. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because every turn you're like, oh, what trick shall I pull? Well, that, yeah, actually, that's a good thing. I never thought of that, but yeah, yeah that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, that uh, the orbital bombardment thing with the mortar yeah, was working really well. Yeah, the cover on it really powerful. Yeah, that was, actually, now that I think about it, yeah. screw you, man. Good <laughs> <laughs> old big mate, he was probably my MVP, I think. Yeah, he the saved bikes, the Dreadnought for a turn. Saved the Dreadnoughts and he moved round with all the bikes, and the bikes were a really powerful unit. I thought, uh, what was the thing, uh, there was a unit that I thought was really annoying, uh, the Tank Busters, they were really they annoying. Were really, I took out two Lemon Russes with those, yeah. they were really good. And they held on for freaking dear life, causing yeah. me to constantly... It's nice to have a unit in Orcs that can properly hurt a vehicle. Yeah. Well, there you go. That, that's us done. I thought that was pretty good. I hope yeah, you guys really enjoyed, enjoyed that. that. And uh, see you for the next battle report. Will do.